Welcome to Trina Talk. This is the podcast where guests share their stories of pursuing their passions, living a fulfilled life, and empowering others. Each week, I talk with inspiring leaders, business owners, and people with amazing stories from around the world in unscripted conversations as they share their successes and failures. This podcast is all about empowering you to keep striving in your personal and professional life. I am your host, Trina L. Martin. Welcome to Trina Talk. If you're listening, go out and subscribe to the show so that you won't miss an episode. My goal here with Trina Talk is to empower and impact people all around the world. So I need your help to do that. Go out and tell your friends, your family, and everyone you know to listen to Trina Talk. There's a new episode every Monday. Hey, welcome to episode 195. The topic of this week's episode is tax-free money. And I don't know about you, but I want some tax-free money. My guest this week is Daniel Blue. Daniel is a regular contributor to Forbes.com. He's the owner of Quest Education. It's a company that helps entrepreneurs obtain capital for their companies, pay off high interest debt, and make money tax-free using a self-directed retirement account. So Daniel is giving a lot of gems in this episode about your money, retirement, entrepreneurs, and, and the whole ball of wax when it comes to your finances. So grab your pen and your pad and take notes and get ready to learn what Daniel is teaching you. Hi, Daniel. Welcome to Trina Talk. Hey, Trina. Thank you so much for having me here today. I am happy to um, speak with you. You are um, doing something that actually was very interesting to me because I hadn't heard of anyone with the specialty that you have. But before we get started, I usually ask all my guests to tell the listeners who you are and what made you the Daniel that you are today. Yeah, I would say just a, a series of, of mistakes is is why I'm here and, and why, you know, the, the people listening to this right now that uh, are quote unquote making it and, and doing things in this world. Um, big reason why you're making it happen is just going through adversity. Um, I'm, I'm not special in any way, shape or form. Um, I'm someone that came from a byproduct of a uh, 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 a household, which is a single mom and, uh, just watched my mom struggle growing up, lived in California. And, uh, I really found a lot of solace in sports. Uh, sports was something that was kind of like my, my gateway. Um, just kind of, uh, being able to see, you know, what happened with my mom and, and my dad and, uh, sports was, was that channel for me, um, ended up, uh, getting addicted to drugs at, at a young age. Um, but what I find interesting is, you know, entrepreneurs, people that have solved problems in this world, business owners. Um, yeah, maybe they, you know, have the, the college degree. Um, but usually a lot of them didn't come from money. They, they had some kind of adversity they dealt with at a young age. And, um, I'm grateful for that. And that's, uh, you know, where I've been able to kind of shape where I'm at today in terms of just learning from a lot of the, the mistakes that I've learned. Um, didn't grow up with a lot of money, didn't grow up with family full of entrepreneurs, uh, dropped out of college. So um, being able to be in the financial space is, is interesting as well. I don't have you know that polished career. I didn't graduate from Princeton and uh, you know work in Wall Street. Um, but uh, I, I think that's the beautiful part about this world. You don't have to be cut from a certain cloth to, to get where you are, where you are today. You know, I, I totally agree. And, I, and I'm glad you said that because it's not where you start is where you, you know you your journey and where you end and you are in the financial space and you are the owner of Quest Education. Tell the listeners what what Quest is and what you do. And then um, I think you told us a little bit about you know, probably why you're doing that. But tell us why you come about to um have found it quest education. Yeah, basically the problem that we solve in the marketplace is helping Americans access money in their retirement accounts, penalty and tax-free. Uh, most people are conditioned to think a certain way when it comes to their 401k and IRA that this is money that's tied up and they can't touch. It's money that's for a rainy day when they're retired. And if they happen to be lucky enough to touch the money, they're going to get nailed in penalties and taxes to the IRS. 
And that's a myth. That's not true. So our company aims to teach people how they can actually use their retirement accounts now, how they can access the money now without paying penalties and taxes and and use the money different ways. Maybe they want to use the money to start their own business. Maybe they want to use the money to pay off high interest rate credit card debt, maybe invest in crypto, real estate, uh, a bunch of opportunities, different uses um, that you can have with your own money. So that's the type of education that we provide. And uh, I became an entrepreneur three years ago where I, I don't have this uh, you know, Gary V story where I grew up wanting to become a business owner. Um, that was really not on my mind at, at all. Um, I, I came to this point just out of necessity, um, kind of going back to my story. My parents got divorced when I was 12. It was just my mom and I at that point and just watched her struggle in my teenage years. And I just was like, man, I don't want to do this when I get older. Like I, I don't want to have money be a problem. Uh, so that that struggle was kind of planted in me. And I remember I wanted to make $100,000. Like in high school, right when I graduated, mm-hmm. I'm like, man, if I could just make six figures, like if I could just make 100,000, like mama, we made it, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, it's pretty interesting how naive that, that statement is, right? <laughs> um, as soon as I made $100,000, it was gone. Like I spent it right. before I made it. And, um, you know, Looking back when I was 18, 19, 20, uh, I got into sales and that's how I ended up making my first six figures. Um, and I just made a, a ton of mistakes uh, at 18, 19, 20, my early 20s. My, my credit game was terrible. I didn't file my taxes on time. I, I, didn't, I spent more than I made. I didn't invest money. So my money game was just terrible. Um, and after stumbling and failing enough times, I was able to get my money game right in about my mid 20s. And the, the people that are business owners right now, I'm guessing you were an, an employee at some point in time, right? We all had a job at some point in time and you were probably the best at it, right? Like mm-hmm. you showed up early, you stayed late, you helped people around you, you got other people better, um, you elevated others, you did things without being told, um, you solved problems you weren't asked to solve, like you just went above and beyond. And when you do that for a long enough time and you see the results, And you believe in yourself. And I think this is where sports comes in for me. Um, I played sports my whole life. So I love the parallels between sports and business. You get to a point where you realize you're like, man, I got enough confidence in my own ability and I can do this on my own. Like, why can't I be the captain of my own ship? So that's where I started to actually think that I could become a business owner. And now is a matter of just taking the steps to to make that happen. And uh, I ended up doing that three years ago. Wow. It's that's really a, a great story. So you did that three years ago. What did you do before doing your business? Because you weren't in the financial space, right? Yeah, I, I got into basically when I was 18, I was in the real estate sales space. Um, so I've been talking to entrepreneurs and, and helping them in some way, shape or form financially since I was 18. Um, this particular space, this niche, the self-directed retirement account world, the whole world of accessing your 401k, IRA, penalty and tax-free, got into this space when I was about 24 years old and uh, ended up working for a company. And uh, that's, that's how I ended up learning a lot of what I learned today. Um, so, you know, working for a company, um, um, you know, it's it's a great thing if you're an employee, right? Like, yeah, it's nice being a business owner, but you got to start somewhere. And, and as an employee, you know, I think it's really important that you are paying attention to how business is being ran. Um, you're developing your network, you're saving money. Um, mm-hmm. and, and those were some of the training grounds um, that I ran on to, you know, get to become a business owner. So, um, you know, three years ago is when I made the the jump from employee to employer. Yeah. And you're right. You know, you see uh, as an employee, you're doing all these things and it's just a matter of you, like you said, believing in yourself and going, you know what, I'm doing this to make someone else rich. Let me do this and help myself and get to where I want to be Um, with what you're doing and that that retirement and, and, you know, dealing with that. How, what was your, um, some of your biggest lessons and some of the biggest things that you are teaching your clients? Because like you said, I'm, I'm one of those people too, that thought, okay, retirement accounts are just that, you know, it's for when I get retired, that's something I'm supposed to live off and draw on. Um, but you decided to do it, that, that niche of helping people with their retirement, um, 
what are you seeing some of the the downfalls of as far as with people in their mindset of thinking how most people think about their retirement accounts before you go in and teach them what you know? Yeah, I think one uh, big problem that we solve, and, and I see it across the board, I see it um, in, in people of all different ages and income levels is how they manage their debt. And, you know, I'll give you an example. Let's just say someone has $20,000 in credit card debt and they're paying 20% interest. Um, that's not far-fetched, right? Mm-hmm. Like the average interest rate right now is probably 18%. Yeah. You know, these credit card companies are crushing it. Um, uh, the average American has credit card debt. So we talked to a lot of people that, let's just say, have $20,000 in credit card debt paying 20% interest. Meanwhile, their 401k or their IRA is making them, let's just say, 8% a year. Mm. Well, if you're making 8% a year on your money, but you're losing 20% on your debt, you're losing money faster than you're making money. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't sit down and look at that. So when they realize they can actually access their retirement account penalty and tax-free, and they can use that money to pay off the debt that's costing them 20%. Mm. And then there's a way for them to replenish their retirement account. So instead of paying the credit cards every month, they're just paying their retirement account back Essentially, now they're their own bank, and instead of paying the credit card companies, they're just paying themselves back, and they're they're flipping the switch. So, you know, something simple like that. You know, there's definitely times where people will come to us and they're like, "Hey, I got a bunch of money right now. I, I want to invest it." Okay, that that that's great. There's all these cool investments out there right now, right? You got crypto and, and real estate, and, and that's awesome. Um, but let's start with the foundation. Like, what's your credit score look like? What's your debt situation look like? Do you have debt that has high interest rate, right? There's a difference between having debt that's costing you three, four, 5% versus having debt that's costing you 20%. There's a debt, uh, the difference between debt that you use to make money Mm -hmm. versus consumer debt that's a liability, right? right? So, you know, some of those things are really important that that foundation before you start building onto it. Wow. And, you know, talk about because you said you learned the hard way. So talk about some of the things that you went through to make you so wise about this and wanting to help and share your information with other people, because I think that's what people don't think about. You know, we have this debt. We have, like you said, this consumer debt It's not debt that is going to make us money type of thing. So what were some of the things that you went through? The reason why you were like, you know what? I want to teach someone else what I just learned going through this journey so that they don't have to go through it. Yeah. You know, I thought I had it all figured out, Trina, where I thought, well, why do I need a credit card? Like I have Mm -hmm. cash. Like I got this debit card. Like I don't need a credit card. I got cash, right? Cash is king. Mm -hmm. And yeah, cash is helpful. Um, but however, credit and other people's money is is awesome. Um, so I, I made the mistake of of not building credit in my early twenties. Um, and uh, you know, I, I remember just reading different books and talking to different people. Where you know, I started to you know understand and realize that credit's a tool, and you actually need to have credit history and utilization of credit. Um, and and that's a big reason. That I was able to start Quest Education three years ago, where you know I ended up maxing out a, a bunch of zero percent credit cards to, to get this business going. Um, having credit is is massive, especially when you go from employee to employer. You know your personal credit score is 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 everything. Like they're going to be able to. The banks are always going to be looking at your credit score, um, so you have to have that. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's um, it's amazing that you know people don't know that. And, and you can, you can use that credit to get you to other, because I've done that too with my business. I'm like, okay, well, I have a good credit score. I have credit cards. Let me, you know, fund my dream. That's how I put it. I'm like, let me, let me fund my dream. But when you're going through that and you're helping people, and, and it's funny because you said people come to you and they say, oh, I have all of this money. But then you ask them, okay, well, what is your debt? What is you, you know, what are your credit score look like? How common is it? Because to me, if I had a whole bunch of money, my well, my mindset is, okay, I'm going to pay off this debt because I don't like debt. I don't like bills. How common is it that you see people like that that come in and, and they have debt and whatever, but they haven't thought about paying it off, but they're talking about investing? Women of color in tech feel excluded, isolated, and treated as though they are invisible. 
We have to work twice as hard and be twice as good to get noticed. I help women of color in tech get past imposter syndrome, navigate the obstacles in the tech workplace, and advance in their careers by being confident, showing up authentically, and negotiating the pay and promotions they deserve so that they can represent and remain in tech. If you are a woman of color in tech and you're ready to take command of your career path, then Tech Trifecta is for you. It's my private coaching program and is now open. Enroll today at tlmintl.link forward slash Tech Trifecta. Yeah, it's, it's really common, especially in, in this, this day and age, right? Like you hear about, you know, GameStop stocks and crypto and all these people that are making money. And, and I'm not here to discount that. There's certainly, you know, money to be made. Um, but that's, that's the glitz and get glamour. That's, that's the shininess, right? Like what about the, the surface? What about, you know, peeling back that surface and, and that foundation? So, um, I really think it just comes down to, you know, being realistic with the, the numbers in the situation. Like there's some people, you know, and I'll just use what you, you just said. I know you're, you're super savvy. So, you know, you're going to get what I'm saying, but like, if you had a, a chunk of money and you're like, man, I want to just pay off my debt. Like, I don't like to be in debt. I just want to pay it off. Well, think about that because if that money could be used to be deployed in your business and make, you know, 10, 20, 30% return, let's just say, versus using that money to pay off debt that's costing you 3%. Like I just refinanced my house. My, that's 3%. Like that's cheap money. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, like I'm probably not going to pay that off. I'm not in a rush to pay that right. off because I could use that money to make more money. Right. Mm -hmm. However, if, if my mortgage was 8%, I'd be trying to refinance that. But I wouldn't be able to refinance it if I didn't have a good personal credit score, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why, you know, personal credit is is so key. And eventually you can get to the point where you can have what's called business credit, right. where you have business credit cards and mm -hmm. you have business lines of credit. And the cool part about that is when you use that uh, business credit card, that debt doesn't reflect on your credit report. So it's not bringing down your credit scores. You actually can carry debt. Um, and you want to be careful with that. It's important to carry debt. If you are going to carry debt, you want to have, you know, maybe a 0% interest rate mm -hmm. um, credit card. So there's just some different ways to kind of manipulate the credit game, but it yeah. all comes down to having good personal credit score. Yeah. And and I want to go back to something you said a few minutes ago about um, how you said, I don't need a credit card. I, I got cash. Um, yeah. How important is that? Because I think I heard um, Robert Kiyosaki, the rich dad, poor dad. I think he was saying how. He has, you know, no, no debt, no credit cards, no anything like that. And he was saying how it, it's he runs into issues because people are like, well, you don't have credit history or whatever. How important is that? Because, you know, a lot of people would think, well, why why would I get a credit card? Because that's not a good thing. Um, tell us about the, you know, the benefits. You talked about it some, but, you know, it's really important to have something. So what do you what do you suggest in like somebody start out with? Should they just get one credit card and that be it or what? Yeah. So the main thing is, is not having that history is going to not give you any credit score, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you never open up a credit card, um, it's going to be tough to do something simple like getting a lease on an apartment, mm -hmm. right? Like I don't think people realize our credit scores are constantly being checked, right? When you get your car insurance, they're pulling your credit. When you're getting the phone, they're probably pulling your credit. When you're getting an apartment, a lease, they're pulling your credit. When you're buying a car, you're pulling a credit, right? Like it's just all around us. And, um, you know, so I'd, I'd be really curious to know, I'd love to ask Robert Kiyosaki, like, man, like, how do you do all these real estate deals without credit, right? Because eventually you're going to need a refinance and right. that refinance is going to have the, the credit score come into play, right? So um, you know, I, I think it's just as an entrepreneur, you want to have as many options as you can, right? Like if you go into your game plan and if you have more options to, to play, um, the better you're going to be. And, and having options financially is, is really important because at some point you're going to need capital to deploy in, in your business in some way, shape or form. And I think using other people's money is, is a powerful tool and, and using the bank's money. They're constantly using money to make with our money. So why can't we use their money to make money? 
Yeah, that's so true. So what would you tell the entrepreneur who has done what you said and they found themselves like um, in debt from using their credit cards to, you know, to get themselves funded and going? What would you tell them as far as how to switch back to get themselves back to where they don't have the credit card debt, their credit scores back in standing? How would you tell them to go about that? Have high pain tolerance. Um, I mean, I, I can't tell you, you know, the amount of time that I had a bunch of credit card debt and business is slow and mm. I'm paying other people. Yeah. I think one thing that people forget is, is as a business owner, especially when you employ staff, you know, we're not this large company, we've got 12 employees right now, um, but you're the last to get paid, right? Like, I think people have this conception that, you know, this misconception that because you're a business owner, like you're just going to be balling. Right. And like, maybe you're balling on Instagram because <laughs> you use credit cards, you know what I mean? Yeah. But ultimately, you know how much is in your bank account. Yeah. Um, you know what your credit score looks like. You know how much credit card debt that you have, right? Mm-hmm. So um, what I would tell that person is you, you have to be willing to endure financial pain for mm-hmm. a long time. Business is the long game. Right. right. Like you're not going to make it overnight. Yes, there are some people out there that experience success in a very short time frame, but those are few and far between. Right. You know, most businesses take time to solve a problem. They take time to get their idea and the um the the the, the solution to the marketplace and then collect the revenue and then start duplicating and then scaling. Like all that stuff takes time. So, you know, what what really helped me is there's definitely some dark days, you know, over the years, times where I didn't have much in the bank account, mm-hmm. maxed out credit cards, you know, business was slow. I hadn't collected a paycheck in six months. Um, but really what helped me was just living below my means. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I could have bought a much bigger house than the house I'm in right now. Um, but I want to live below below my means. I'm, I'm 32 years old. Um, I'm in this for the long game. I know I'm going to be a lot further along five years from now, 10 years from now. So I, I would rather live below my means for a good chunk of time. That way I have a, a, a larger um, room for error. So that way, if I have a slow month, a slow six months, like I can endure that because I don't have this crazy lifestyle that I'm living. So I can get, feed my baby more. Right. Your business is your baby. And, and that right. baby is not going to be sustainable and self-sufficient right off the bat. You know, you're going to have to keep feeding that baby. And a lot of times you're like, man, I'm feeding you more than I'm feeding me. <laughs> and that's true. That's, that's business. Um, but, you know, you got to have that, that patience um, in, in the long game. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you said that as far as the patience and, you know, being able to endure, because I think and like and you mentioned it, it's something I love to say too. Um, people are living the Instagram best life. You know, they put on Instagram that, oh, yeah, I'm balling. I'm, you know, I'm driving this vehicle. I'm this and that and that. But when you're an entrepreneur and you're in trying to build something that's sustainable, yeah, you, you're not driving the Range Rover right off unless you had it before then. Um, and I think people are, um, yeah, they're distracted and they see someone on Instagram and think, well, why can't I do that? I should be there. But really to really be a true entrepreneur and have a business that's really worth something, like you said, you're going to struggle in the beginning. It's not going to be, you know, Ooh, here's my business. And the next day I'm like, you know, making millions, it's not going to be that. And, and I love it when people like you come on this show and they tell the truth because so, so many times people, you know, we're into this instant gratification, you know, because of social media and Instagram and all of this, but I, I, I'm glad you said that. And when you're working with people with their finances and you probably your entrepreneurs and they're thinking, well, you know, why can't I just do this? What is your advice that you're telling them? Cause I'm pretty sure you probably come across people. They're like, you know, man, I, you know, I can buy this and I can hit it here. You know, like I can buy something and it can be my quick fix to me making it to wherever I want to go. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, anytime that I'm spending money personally, like within my family, um, I always think about like, what what is this accomplishing right now? Right. Um, I went to Florida, uh, 
last month and and that was with my wife we were gone mm-hmm. for you know eight days and it was just her and i um that accomplishes a lot because right. you know i think a part of a, a a marriage is just having that one-on-one time right exploring um you know we've been together for almost 10 years like I know that's part of feeding the relationship. And I also know that it's a lot easier to run a business when you have a good a home life. Right. Um, you know, so, you know, something personally like that, anytime money's being spent within on a, on a personal side, it's always like, okay, what, what is this getting the family? Like how is this benefiting us personally? Right. Um, you know, on the business side, anytime money is being spent, um, of course you want to think of ROI, right? Like, how are, how are we going to get this money back? Um, and there's different types of, of ROI, right? Like sometimes you can spend money and you can expect that money to come back within a shorter period of time. Um, other times, you know, you're playing the long game, right? Especially if you're investing into like branding, um, you know, branding is going to take some time. So I think it's a matter of just being realistic and, and um, where you're spending the money and how you're spending the money and, you know, having a budget too. I, I think that's really important. That was something that you know, I've been able to get a lot better at over the last, uh, I'd probably say, say six months. Um, we hired a CFO um, before I was the CFO. I was more mm-hmm. like, all right, let's, we got the money, let's do it. Um, right. and, and I didn't think about a lot of the, the consequences uh, and, and of not having a budget. I was more kind of just flying by the seat of my pants. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I think you can wing it in business. I think you can. Uh, rely off the talent. Um, you know, mm-hmm. I'm grateful to have a talented team um, and we have a great service. So like you, there's the ability to just wing it and still see success, but you can only get so far um, right. until you start having structure and planning and budgeting and uh, executing to start taking up to the next level. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and I have to admit that I was one of, you know, when I started my business, I was the CFO and I, I didn't do too good at that because I was, you know, it's like, oh, I, you know, I, I need that class, you know, and I was telling someone, and it was like, I was, I ended up being this, let me enroll in this. And, and it's like, I didn't need that. It's like, I had everything I needed. I had the expertise and everything, but then you go into this, well, okay, well, maybe I need somebody to do marketing for me. Okay. Well, let me enroll in this class. You know, what is your advice to entrepreneurs that are starting out that feel like that and, and end up in that trap? Because it actually took me, I actually sat down with pen and paper and I wrote down all the things that I spent money on that I really shouldn't have and didn't need. And it's not doing anything for me today. And I'm like, this is a lot of money. (laughs) How do you help entrepreneurs? What would you tell them so that they don't fall into that trap? Yeah. I mean, I I think one delegating, delegating Mm -hmm. was something that was hard for me to do. Um, I wanted to feel like I was in control of everything. Um, And, and, you're only going to be able to get so far if you're the bottleneck, right? Like imagine you're on vacation with your, your family Mm -hmm. and you have to check your phone constantly because, you know, business can't continue without you. Okaying something It has to go through you. Like you're spending all this money and time on vacation and you can't even really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Right. So ultimately you probably want to get to a point where you could be chilling with your family on the beach and money's just going into your bank account and it, you don't have to be involved. Right. So that's, that's the goal. Um, that can't happen without delegating, without empowering other people. Um, so that's something that's, that's really, really important is, is delegation. Um, and then, you know, being able to, um, you know, put yourself in a position where, you know, once you're, you're, you're delegating, um, you know, you have to make sure that whatever you're focused on, like just focus on one thing, mm-hmm. um, you know, as the, the CEO, as the, the, the owner of your business owner operator, you're getting pulled in all these different directions, right? Marketing, HR and operations and, and fulfillment and sales. Like it's a lot. And that's why you have to delegate and put the right people in places to manage, but you still are going to have a job description. You're still going to have stuff on your plate. And I have found if I, if I just focus on one thing, like that one thing today, that one thing this week, that Mm -hmm. one thing, and don't move on to something else until that one thing is done. And if you can focus uh, on that one thing, other things are going to pop up, but you can say no to those things. It's okay to say no. Um, I know that's hard because most people like to say yes. They don't like mm-hmm. to let people down and they don't like confrontation. So saying no is usually harder, but no is easier to say, you know, than, than yes. It's 
two two letters. Yes, it's three letters. So I mean, logically, you know, no should be easier, but you know, our brains function a, a different way. So just focusing on one thing and don't do anything else until that one thing is done has been uh, helpful for me. Wow, that's great advice. Great advice just to focus on the one thing, and that way you don't feel overwhelmed and you're not doing, like I say, not doing what I'm doing and you know did and spent money on this and that. Oh, you know, it's like, yeah. Oh, slow down. You don't need to do all of that. So that's good advice. Um, we're going to roll into our questions. Are you ready? Let's rock and roll. All right. Okay. Who or what motivates you? Competing. Uh, back to sports. I, I love to, to compete. So, uh, you know, that's that's what gets my, my blood going. What demotivates you? Man being isolated at home. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love, you know, I guess more specific uh, and, and something that maybe more people can relate to when I get off my routine, you know, like, like right now I'm off my routine. Like I'm not able to go to the gym every day. So I'm, I'm quarantined. Um, is, is, is massive. So um, that is a demotivation right there. That'll get me in a funk real quick. Yeah. When was a time that something was said or done to hurt you, but it worked out for your good? Um, you know, I wasn't, um, wasn't involved in, in my daughter's life a whole lot. Um, her first few weeks born, um, actually didn't, wasn't there when she was born at the hospital. Um, I was addicted to Oxycontin and, mm-hmm. uh, that, that crushed my soul. Um, I've been clean over 10 years and, uh, you know, wouldn't change my past for, for anything, helped me grow a lot of adversity. So, um, that's, that's definitely something that hurt, but, uh, you know, it's, it worked out in the long run. It's, it's, we got a beautiful thing going on now. Mm. What is your fear? Um, not living up to my potential. Okay. Is there a time when you wish you had done something? that you didn't. Yeah. Um, I think we, we all have done this, right? Like you're having a debate debate or, you know, you are speaking in a podcast or to your employees or like you're speaking to one person or two people or five people and you get done speaking and you're like, man, I should have said that. Mm-hmm. Like that, that happens all the time for me. Yeah. Is there a time that you wish you had not done something? Um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely some times where, um, you know, you just need to shut up when you're in a marriage, you know, the, the, the wife is always right. So, you know, just shut up and do what she says. Your wife has, she trained very well to (laughs) tell her that (laughs) (laughs) That I said that, um, what is your definition of success? Living up to your potential. Okay. How do you recharge? Um, going, uh, definitely going to the gym, um, on a, on a personal level. And then, uh, you know, for, for those that are in a relationship, I, for me too, it's, uh, it's going somewhere new with the wife, like just new city exploring, no agenda, um, that, that gives you some time to recharge the batteries. Yeah. What are you awesome at? Um, I would say communicating to people. It's, uh, that's been my jam. What legacy do you want to leave? Uh, a, a legacy of, of helping people. Um, you know, my, at my, my passion is, uh, I want to be able to give back to the youth, um, people like me, you know, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, when I was a kid, uh, single house, single parent household, um, just struggling. And, uh, you know, I want to be able to help out, uh, kids in, in that type of environment. Wow. So Daniel, tell the listeners how they can connect with you if they need to, um, find you for Quest Education and whatever else you got going on. Yeah, best place would be DanielBlue.me. It's uh, Daniel and then blue, just like the color, DanielBlue.me. Um, that website has a bunch of free information. You can buy my book. It's called Blueprint to Your Best Retirement. Um, the book is on the website. And then, uh, you know, if you've got a retirement account and if the idea of accessing that money penalty and tax free kind of got the wheels churning and, uh, you know, you're kind of thinking like, oh my gosh, I didn't know this. Um, you know, there's some, some information there that can uh, help you um, access that money penalty and tax free. Great. Yeah. That's, that's very interesting. I'll probably be hitting you up because yeah, I, I hate 
having to pay at the IRS, but <laughs> <laughs> don't we <laughs> no. all? Yeah, don't we all? Well, Daniel, thank you uh, for being on the show. I was trying to, you know, honor your situation. So um, didn't want to hold you too long, but thank you for being on the show. It's been great connecting with you. Hey, Trina, thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. I want to thank my guests for being on the show and I want to thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the show and don't forget to tune in next week.